kind of a little neck problem today. Millions of people all over the world, and especially in America, have trouble sleeping. That sleep could be attributed to a numerous number of problems, but today I'm here to help you achieve the best night's sleep you've ever had. I've got 25 sleep hacks and science tricks to help you get the best night of sleep you have ever had. I'm retired professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, and today we are covering these 25 science-based tips and hacks to help you get the best night of sleep ever. Oh my lord. All right, so number one, this is my best tip for people that don't sleep well is to set an alarm to go to bed. Okay, so one of the problems a lot of people have, if you're naturally a night owl, I am one of those people, sometimes you need to force yourself to get ready to go to bed. And I know this is a hard cycle to get into because a lot of times you're like, I don't know, I'm just, I slept in and I'm up late at night and I'm working on stuff and I'm in the groove and I'm ready to go. I could tell you that since I've switched to being a morning person, I'm much more productive, much more effective, and of course, I sleep much better because of that. So whatever your bedtime is, if you have a tough time to reminder, set that alarm on your phone and just say, guess what? It's now time for bed, and when that alarm goes off, then you're done with the phone. That's it. The phone's done, uh, you're no longer looking at it, you're winding down, and you're intentionally preparing to sleep. Number two. When you wake up to that alarm in the morning, do not hit the snooze button. I know this is super tempting, right? You look at it and you say, man, I'm just, I'm gonna wake up here, but I know I don't have to wake up until this time, which is three snooze cycles later, so this is my goal and this is what I have to do. Don't do that, okay? If you know you're gonna hit the snooze button, you're way better off just setting the alarm for that later time. The reason being, is it disrupts your REM sleep when the alarm goes off, okay? You might remember waking up and having a little bit of dream and then falling back into sleep and then the dream is different or ruined or just not the same. That's disrupting your REM sleep. And so if you can make sure that you don't hit that snooze button, sleep as late as you're gonna absolute, absolutely can, you know what that time is, set the alarm for then and that's better sleep quality for you. Don't drink alcohol. Period, don't drink alcohol, you'll sleep better, but specifically don't drink alcohol right before you're gonna fall asleep because while it might make you feel sleepy and tired, it's going to disrupt your sleep uh, throughout the night. So we talked about that in the uh, video we made about uh, benefits of being sober. So it is one of the benefits of being sober is better sleep. Uh, next tip is make sure your room is nice and dark. Uh, if it's too bright outside, uh, it's gonna affect your sleep. If you got street lights, try blackout curtains. Make sure the doors uh, and sh shades are shut and the room is not too bright. The next tip is to make sure your room is cool. So pr preferably less than 70 degrees or less. That will help you sleep uh, better. No caffeine, no caffeine period. I had a video I talked about the benefits of being caffeine free. Sleep quality is definitely at the top of that list. But the other thing is, if you're gonna indulge in caffeine, make sure you put a cutoff line and say, 12 o'clock noon on, no caffeine. I'm not having any of it. You will sleep better if you start obeying that one rule. Uh, the next one is wake up in the morning and exercise. It takes only eight minutes of exercise in the morning, but studies have shown over and over again that if you wake up in the morning and you exercise, you will sleep better at night. Uh, not only that, but you'll have a more productive day because that energy endorphin release uh, that you're experiencing in the morning will help power you through the day, and then by nighttime, you should be tired and ready to go to sleep. Don't exercise super close to bed. This is one of mine that I'm guilty of, it, um, usually on Thursday nights. I play soccer, indoor soccer, futsal between 8.30 and 10 p.m., and I tell you, I am done with that. Uh, playing and man, I cannot sleep. I'm up later and so I just have to deal with that on Friday. And even then, I'm still trying uh, Friday mornings every day, try to get up the same time and at least get on the bike and spin the legs. But if you want the best sleep, avoid exercise for the two hours before you go to sleep, especially strenuous exercise. Uh, avoid big carb heavy meals before you go to sleep. Uh, I know sometimes it's nice to go fill your belly full of a big bowl of pasta, 
But in reality, one of the problems with that is, oof, man, you are not going to sleep well at night because of that. Um, other things that are heavy creams can be problematic as well as excessive amounts of protein it can be hard to digest and you won't sleep as well. Um, so make sure you're trying to keep a level blood sugar diet before you go to sleep. And that's the best way to have a nice sleep. This, the 10th tip right here, this is a big one with me. Your bed is for two things only. Sleeping is one. The other one starts with S and it is not streaming Netflix. See what I did there? Oh. Um, so uh, make sure that you do not have a TV in your bedroom. That's the surefire way to make sure that you're not doing that, but also make sure you're not on your phone watching videos. Even reading in bed before you fall asleep or working on your laptop is extremely counterproductive to a quality night's sleep, so try to avoid it at all costs. Remember, your bed is for two things. They both start with S. Streaming Netflix is not one of them. Uh, next thing is quiet, okay? You want your room to be quiet. And so when I'm talking about quiet, I just mean loud noises, right? You're trying to avoid things like sirens and train horns and that kind of stuff. So make sure that your room is quiet. And if it is not quiet, you live next to a busy street or a train tracks. I've been there, both of them. Uh, get yourself a nice pair of earplugs so that that's not waking you up in the middle of the night. Um, the other tip, number 12, is make sure it's not too quiet. Sometimes if that's a problem for your room, invest in a white noise machine or turn on a fan, uh, a ceiling fan or a box fan, a floor fan, anything that makes some sort of noise that's constant can be a nice distraction to help put you to sleep. Uh, next thing, this is a tough one for a lot of people, including in my house, no pets in your bed. Okay, I know you might think, wow, I love to cuddle with my animals and it's so great to sleep with them, but when those animals move in the middle of the night, they are distracting you and disrupting your sleep and you might not even know it. You might not even wake up when it happens, but it could still be disrupting your sleep. So say no to the pets, uh, be firm with that. And if they're on the bed, hey, before you fall asleep, pets are off the bed. Uh, next one, 14, uh, nap wisely. So try to keep your naps to 30 minutes or less. If you're taking a longer nap, uh, make sure that it's in between two very strenuous bouts of work or workouts so that you are adequately fatigued afterwards. So I know a lot of, a lot of times, especially when I was training, uh, for massive races, naps would be a daily requirement for me. And sometimes those would even be long, but it would be, be in between two super hard workouts. So then I never had problems falling asleep at night. I've also always had a hard cutoff on naps. I definitely do not fall asleep after 4 p.m. If it's after 4 p.m., even a 15 minute nap can be detrimental to you falling asleep at night. Uh, number 15, we're going to say a little prayer. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest. Um, so you can strike a pose, a yoga pose, do meditation or say a prayer. I don't care who you're praying to, your God, the God of energy, Thor, Sheldon Cooper. Lord. <laughs> This is Sheldon Cooper. You're good friends with my mom. It doesn't really matter. If you say a prayer of gratitude or in request for some uh, assistance with something, it can help ease your mind, relax you, and help you fall asleep faster, especially if it becomes a routine. Next one is dragon breathing. So dragon breathing is super deep breathing through your diaphragm and your lungs, uh, pushing your stomach in and out. If you do several of those, it can put you in a very relaxed state um, and your brainwave activity will slow down during that breathing, put you in a state where you naturally want to fall asleep. Uh, the next one, aromatherapy. So breathing can be, can be extremely calming. Smell can be extremely calming, but it can also aid in the sleep. Many scientific studies have proven that lavender is a calming scent that helps put people to sleep. And in particular, it helps put women to sleep. Uh, I didn't do the science. I didn't do the studies. I'm just saying that this can help you sleep. Uh, and so in, if that becomes a routine, your brain can associate that scent with it's time for bed and sleep. So you can use um, uh, an essential oil diffuser with some lavender next to your bed. Put that on before you go to sleep. Bam. Next thing you know, you're having the best sleep of your life. 
Uh, the next thing, you could take a hot shower, a hot bath, a sauna or a steam shower uh, before you go to bed. This warms your body, it makes you a little bit tired, and it puts you in a relaxed state where you may want to sleep uh, and can just instantly knock you out once you're under those covers. Uh, the next one is progressive muscle relaxation. So if you've never done this, uh, this is like going from head to toe or back up from toe to head and tensing those muscles and then relaxing them. And so this exercise, like if you start with your jaw muscle and you're like, all right, I'm gonna tense this, get your jaw super tense and then just try to relax your jaw as much as possible. So it's nice and relaxed. Go all the way down your body. Sometimes you go all the way back up your body after that. Um, but progressive muscle relaxation is a nice way to put your body in a relaxed state and make your brain activity that such that you're going to fall asleep. Uh, the next one is visualization. So we've heard about how visualization can help improve athletic performance. Visualization is also something that can help you fall asleep. So if you're an athlete, you're visualizing your performance before you go to bed, which is a perfect thing to do um, because then it helps program your subconscious mind for your athletic performance. And we'll get more into this in another video. But if you're trying to fall asleep after you do your athletic visual visualization, visualize yourself falling asleep into the deepest sleep you've ever had in your life. And before you know it, your brain will be relaxed and trained to think of that deep sleep as the next progression in your, in your cycle. And not only will you have great vivid dreams when you do that, uh, but your body will sleep much easier because of it. Uh, the next one, uh, materials in your bed. So uh, a lot of times changing the materials in your bed can help you sleep better. I'm a big fan of the uh, silk pillow and silk sheets. Uh, silk is very naturally cooling for your body. It's also very good for your skin. Uh, so having a nice cool sheet to wrap up in can also help you fall asleep and improve your skin. Uh, so therefore you could get better sleep just by changing the materials on your bed sheets. Uh, this is a big one, number 22. And I'm not talking about Caitlin Clark, but uh, uh, if you don't know, uh, you're not paying attention to Caitlin Clark right now, you're definitely living under a rock. This is Clark from the logo. Hey. Caitlin Clark behind the back on the spin to the hole. And Clark, she'll need the heroics here. Clark in transition. Teammates find more confidence. Clark. But number 22 is this new one my wife and I have been doing uh, recently. So Ashley and I now have two separate blankets in bed. So uh, we kind of got in this battle about who was taking more of the covers and uh, trying to turn over and fight and all that stuff. And so now we just have two. So she has hers, I have mine. And guess what? We don't fight over them anymore. Uh, and there's plenty of covers to go around, right? So that's a nice tip as well. Um, the next one is to track your sleep. So I've got this Garmin Phoenix on my wrist right now. It tracks my sleep every night. It gives me a sleep score. I'm not going to go into the efficacy of the data and how accurate it is, but if you're wearing it every night and you're paying attention to it, it can be a great tool just to help you analyze things and look at it and say, wow, I slept really well last night or I didn't sleep at all. Um, it's telling you the hours you're asleep. It's also telling you your sleep stages and giving you an overall sleep rating. Uh, but tracking your sleep is one really great way to improve your sleep quality. Um, the next one I have is somewhat of a sleeper, uh, sleep tracker, but it's also this cool app that I, that I use that lets me listen to my sleep. It's called Sleep Cycle. You can download it at the Apple Store or uh, the Google Play Store. There's a seven day free trial with it, but you set it next to your bed. It records the sound and light in the room, gives you a rating on this. It also tries to do your sleep stages, but the coolest feature of this app is it actually records all the noise in the room and gives you those sound clips. So if you're like me and you talk and occasionally snore in your sleep, 
you can have some really entertaining conversations with your wife the next day when you pull out the phone and say, wow, listen to what I was saying last night in my sleep. And of course, then my wife's like, yes, I heard that. I know. Um, or listen to yourself snore so you know what you sound like. Uh, in the case of my wife, who's adamant she never snores, uh, I've done a couple of these recordings just to show her that, yes, occasionally you do snore. However, I can guarantee you it is not near as bad as my snoring. So thank you for that. Um, but the Sleep Cycle app, you can check that out and record yourself and have some fun with it at the same time. You improve your sleep quality. Uh, the last tip that I have is to do a sleep study or sleep therapy. If you're still, if you've tried all these 24 hacks above this and you're not sleeping well enough, I suggest you go do a sleep study and then at that same time, you'll meet with a sleep therapist to help recommend some heavier things to, uh, to get you to go to sleep. That could be sleep apnea, it could be uh, restless leg syndrome. There are a lot of things that can happen uh, that you're not aware of and these things will not fix. So if all else fails, Go get a sleep study from an actual sleep therapist and you will have even better Z's. So those are my tips. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, if you're looking for the finest bespoke bicycles on the planet, check out the full line of diamond bikes for triathlon, road, gravel, and mountain bikes. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you very much.